Well, here we are in my 2001 C5 Corvette Z06. Uh, we're going to go over some quick stuff with the joying head unit I have and the Arduino-based volume control that I came up with. Um, so here is what I figured out. Uh, this is the traction control plate, which is a spare one that I had. Um, 3D printed the knob. And underneath, there are some electronics. Uh, that's the basic Arduino board, and you can see it's just got a little red light going on there. Uh, there's a little push button and some other components, nothing too crazy. Um, all the magic is in the code, of course. So I'm going to show how that works and uh, integration with the, this particular joying head unit. So first things first, I'm going to go in. Um, the joying unit, head unit has this feature called control. And it's basically just a steering wheel control. And so you go into that, and it comes up with all these buttons. Hopefully that shows up all right. But uh, you can see there's power, um, SRC, I don't know what that is, GPS, volume up, volume down, mute, play pause, uh, backward skip, forward skip, uh, seek back, seek forward, etc. Uh, so there's a lot of options you can do in this screen. This is the entire set of options, so I think it should be a pretty good start. Uh, so you can see down here at the bottom it says, please hold the button on the steering wheel into the learning state. And so what that means is if you had a typical steering wheel control, you hold the button down, and then while you're holding the button on the steering wheel, you tap on the function on the screen for what you want it to do. So with this, it's not an actual steering wheel, obviously, and it operates a little bit differently. And that was kind of out of the sake for simplicity of components, at least. So what I'm going to point out is uh, there's two LEDs that will light up. There's only one showing right now, and that is just the power LED. And then there's another LED, which is kind of like a status or function LED. So first things first, um, I have two different modes on here. There's like a programming mode, which means it's going to simulate if you're long pressing on a steering wheel button, it's about five seconds right now. And then the other mode is the standard operation mode, which only basically clicks a button for about 0.15 seconds. And uh, so when I put it into this other mode, I'm going to push this little button right here, that little guy. And uh, then the function or status LED is going to blink three times. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that means we're now in the programming mode. So when I go over here, and let's say I push down on the volume or whatever knob, it doesn't have to be volume, I choose for it to be, but if I push down on this, then you can see it says, please select learning function button. And what that means is while that is shown that way, then it's ready to accept you pressing one of these buttons to turn it into a command. So I'm going to go ahead and this time I'm going to rotate the knob clockwise, which will be my volume down. So I go clockwise, and then I pick volume, sorry, volume up. So I click it, and there it goes. You can see it actually assigned a number to it. Eh, it's kind of blurry. How about that? That's a little better. So that assigned a 9, and what that 9 means is it's out of 255, and it's based on the resistance that it detected from the resistors I'm using to control it. So now let's say I want to do volume down, so I'm going to rotate this counterclockwise. Go into the function mode, and I click volume down. So it assigned another number, 12 in this case. And these numbers are important because that's how it differentiates between the functions of the knob. So now I'm going to press down on the knob. Press down. There we go. And for this one, I'm going to do play pause. So now it assigned the 15. So one of the other features that I built into the Arduino programming is if I press down, and turn, it does something else. So in this case, I want it to do next track. So I'm going to pick that one. And then same thing, I'm going to go counterclockwise, push down. And then I'm going to go like that. And so now there are currently five functions programmable. And I've got all five. And when I'm happy with it, I click the check mark. If I actually want to reset all of them, I click the X and it'll Put everything back to where it says null, um, which is 
kind of a nifty thing, but let's say I actually wanted to turn that push down function into mute. So I go ahead and do push down again, put it in learning mode, and then I click mute, and you can see it took away the value from the play pause. I'm going to go back, so push down again, and we're going to go back to play pause. It takes the value away from the mute, so good to go. I am happy with all of this, so I'm going to click the check mark, it saves it, brings me back to the home screen, and now... I, since I'm not going to turn the ignition off, I'm just going to push the programming button again. So I push it, it'll do two blinks. That means we're back into normal operation mode. And if you didn't want to do that, you could always just turn the ignition off. And when it comes back up, it will go into the standard mode, which is default. Okay. So now I'm going to demonstrate. So if I turn the volume knob clockwise, the volume increases. It's a little slow to respond. I'm working on getting that timing dialed in, but that's just a code change. So I turn the other way, volume goes down. And now, if I press it, it starts playing. So I'll go into the music player. See, it's playing music. I don't know if you can hear it, but volume's going up. And it can go all the way down. So if I tap, since the center push button is set for play pause, I can control that. And if I do the push and rotate, it goes to the next song. Push the other way, goes back, so forth and so on. I can even just press and hold and keep rotating, and it'll keep skipping, and release. Same thing the other way. Something like that. Push. So, very simple function, um, but it works well. 